Welcome back to the North Carolina Plumbing Code class. Uh, we've been going through the North Carolina Plumbing Code, the 2018 edition. And so far, we've covered Chapter 2, Definitions, Chapter 3, General Regulations, and now we're into Chapter 4. And Chapter 4 has the four Fs, fixtures, faucets, and fixture fittings. Uh, so we are going to cover those this class period. So if you look at, and you wanted to flip ahead to the table of contents, it tells you some of the information uh, in Roman numeral 15, some of the information that you can find in chapter, chapter four under fixtures, faucets, and fixture fittings. Just some general information, some fixture materials, minimum plumbing, plumbing facilities, accessible plumbing facilities, installation of fixtures, automatic clothes washers, bathtubs, bidets, dishwashing machines, drinking fountains, Emergency showers and eye wash stations, floor and trench drains, food waste disposer units, garbage can washers, laundry trays, lavatories, showers, sinks, urinals, water closets, whirlpool bathtubs, air fixtures, and equipment, specialty plumbing fixtures, uh, faucets and other fixture fittings, flushing devices for water closets and urinals, manual food and beverage uh, dispensing equipment floor sinks all right so like always i'm not going to go through and just read all chapter four to you uh but i'm just going to highlight and kind of pick out some information uh some that you're going to need to know for the quiz and then some extra stuff too that are just just good information to know uh and then uh you know as you try to fall asleep at night and you want to pull out your code book and uh, go ahead and, and read through some of the extra stuff. Now, make sure that you just kind of read everything that you would that's going to be found in Chapter 4 there. So, Chapter 4 starts on page 23. That's where we're going to get up to. Page 23. The scope of this chapter. This chapter shall govern the materials design and installation of plumbing fixtures, faucets, and fixture fittings in accordance with the type of occupancy and shall provide the minimum number of fixtures for various types of occupancies. What are some of the prohibited fixtures and connections? Uh, water closets having a concealed trap seal or an, unvent, uh, or an unventilated space or having walls that are not thoroughly washed at each discharge in accordance with those ASME numbers and the CSA uh, shall be prohibited. Any water closet that, uh, that permits siphonage of the contents of the bowl back into the tank shall be prohibited. Uh, trough urinals shall be prohibited. Uh, and I know that you've seen some trough urinals before, I'm sure, from being at, uh, often you would see them at ballparks and different things where they had that uh, uh, that big long trough uh, along the bottom and you kind of pee, pee, basically you felt like you were peeing on the wall and letting it run down to that trough there. Um, they also have more of the water conservation uh, going now. Maximum water flow rates and flush volume for plumbing fixtures shall comply with section 604.4 as we look into uh, chapter six uh, that's your water service and distribution and water supply and distribution will get um, uh, cover some of those flow rates and everything that are that are there okay um fixture materials okay uh the quality of fixtures um as you go down to and you see 402.3 402.4 the sheet copper and sheet lead uh, when you're taking your state exam, just be sure uh, you do look for keywords in the in those state exam questions. Um, so if you're reading through the question and you see something that says, "Oh, sheet lead, sheet copper," uh, and asking you for the uh, the weight um, of that, just be sure that you read a little bit more information about that. Are they asking you for is that sheet uh, sheet copper? Is that talking about for roof or sheet lead? Is that dealing with roof uh, flashings for vent terminals, uh, or is that with shower pans? Um, you know, exactly what are we talking about? Because that might uh, differ a little bit and go into different section of your code book for that. But this is for talking about general ap applications, okay? Just for general applications for sheet copper, it shall not weigh less than 12 ounces per square foot, and sheet lead um, should not weigh less than four pounds per square foot, and should be coated with an asphalt paint or other approved coating on those, but just for those uh, general purpose, general applications, okay? Uh, then we get down into 403, minimum plumbing facilities. 
So it's this uh, section of the code book is telling you um, what kind of fixtures do you need for what what buildings. So how about if somebody were to ask you and just said, hey, uh, you're a plumber and, and I was just I'm just going to build a small little house here. Um, but do I really have to have I mean, I'm so used to taking my clothes and getting them washed at the laundromat and everything else. Do I do I have to have a laundry connection? Is the is is the plumbing code require me to have that? Or can I just put whatever fixtures I want into the house? Um, and then, you know, how, how about for um, the, the college there? Do they have to have a certain number of toilets, um, certain number of sinks? What's required and what's not? This is what deals with it here, the minimum plumbing facilities. Okay. So as you look at your chart, this is going to be the start of it right here. And you can flip over, it, and it's continued. So see how this chart just continues on down. It gives you a classification over here on the left, the occupancy, and then the description of the occupancy. Okay, so it could be classified. See how underneath this is, is classified as an assembly. Okay, assembly. But you have different types of assembly over here. A1, assembly one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so be sure that you pick out which one it is. Under this description, it says it's auditoriums without permanent seating, art galleries, exhibition halls, museums, lecture halls, libraries, arcades, and gymnasiums. Um, it also groups in the A-3. We've got places of worship and other religious services, churches without assembly halls. OK, uh, passenger terminals and transportation facilities. All these are some type of assemblies. Then you jump down to A4, you got coliseums, arenas, skating rinks, pools, tennis courts, indoor sporting events and activities, stadiums, amusement parks, bleachers and grandstands for outdoor sporting events and activities. OK, so forth. Then we have up here, it says, here's some of the fixtures. Water closets. OK, so how many water closets do we need? You find where, what exactly is your description of the classification of what you're dealing with, and then come over here and say, well, how many water closets do we need? Um, so if we were talking about this top one here, it's one per 125 for the male, one per 65 for female, okay, on water closets. Lavatories. They need for both male and female, one per 200. No bathtubs and showers are required. Or drinking fountain, one per 500. And then under other, what, what else do we need required there? They say they do require one service sink. Okay. All right, let's make a little bit more sense of this too. You also need to be careful to break down and look for any notes water closets, urinals. It says, so right here, we just said, well, water closets. We said we got to have one per every 125 guys. Um, but it does have a little exception. It says for urinals, see section 419.2. So let's look that up and see what it says. 419.2. You're going to flip over a little bit. 419. Let's see what they say about um, urinals. Okay, on page 34, under urinals, it says substitution for water closet. Saying, so when can I substitute a urinal? It doesn't say that we, it doesn't say urinals are required, but it did say that we can substitute some urinals for water closets. It says in each bathroom or toilet room, Urinals should not be substituted for more than 67% of the required water closets in assembly and educational occupancies. Okay, so that was for assembly and educational occupancies, no more than 67%. Urinals should not be substituted for more than 50% of the requ required water closets in all other occupancies. So anything other that's labeled other than uh, assembly and educational occupancies can go up to uh, 50%. So if it was, if you did the numbers and you said, Hey, for the number of guys that we have in here, and they say, we got to have one per so many, 
and we figured out, oh, we got to have two, two water closets. Well, you could probably get by with one, um, uh, one water closet, one urinal, if you were allowed to the 50%. Okay. Well, let's jump back to the chart that we were looking at. Back there on page 24. Now, here's another thing that you need to be looking for. Just You're just looking for any of the notes, any little letters um, as part of what you're reading here. So let's just say if I asked you something about and said, hey, let's just say you went down to the ballpark or you were, uh, you know, you're you're working on the plumbing for, for one and getting it getting it built. But if it talks about stadiums, amusement parks, bleachers and grandstands for outdoor sporting events and activities. OK, now they have one per 75 for the first 1500 and then one per 120 for the remainder exceeding 1500. Um, so they give you numbers of water clauses per guys, and number of water clauses per girls. But now here's the little thing that I don't want you to overlook. So if you go down here and you're reading the classifications, look for little letters down here. There is the little letter K. That means you need to go to the bottom of the chart, which is not down here. The bottom is actually when you flip over the very last bit. Look, you can see that there's going to be actually throughout all the charts, there's lots of letters that go down. For this one, we were actually looking at K. So if it says for baseball stadiums, so if we were doing it specifically for baseball stadiums, the number of fixtures shall be reduced by 50%. So as you can reduce that number by 50%. Um, because we know that at baseball stadiums, uh, people always pee about, you know, only about 50% of the time as they would normally at a regular stadium. No, that's not it. Uh, but, but think, put, put a little thought into it and try to guess and say, why do you think at baseball stadiums can you get by with half the number of toilets? Um, as you could in some of the other, like, like if it was for a, a, a basketball game uh, or a football game or something, why is it baseball? Uh, so, but if you think about it, um, baseball just kind of continues. It goes on. And if you notice that pe people are going up, getting up, they're going to concession stands, they're going to the bathroom, just kind of up, up and down all the whole ball game because it just keeps going. Um, but if you get to a basketball game, Everybody's like holding it, waiting for halftime or waiting for the, uh, you know, waiting for the break. And when they do, then everybody storms the uh, the bathrooms and say, hey, we better. Then now's the time to go. We don't want to miss any of the game. So um, I, that's why I'm guessing that probably on that one, why they allow you to cut it um, in half for baseball. So that's kind of how you read that chart. Important to you to read it. Hey, let's talk. Let's uh, let's answer the first question we had and said, how about the person asked you and says, hey, in my house, what do I have to have? Do I have to have that? Uh, do I have to have a clothes washer? So let's find it. So you're looking at the classification and we don't fall under assembly or business. It's not educational, factory and industrial, institutional, uh, such as like prisons and uh, adult daycares, child cares, places, employees, uh, mercantile. Oh, Ooh, residential, residential. Now we're getting, starting to get to it. Now, residential has a couple classifications. R1, uh, hotels, motels, boarding houses. Okay. What have they got to have for those? If you're in there, it's basically one per sleeping unit for uh, guys and girls. How about lavatories? Bathroom sinks, one per sleeping unit. Uh, a bathtub or shower is one per sleeping unit. That's all that they have to have. Any extras? No. Just basically a, a toilet. A sink and a uh, in a either a, a, a bathtub, bathtubs or showers is w one per sleeping unit is all they gotta have. Um, R two is dormitories, fraternities, sororities, boarding houses. Uh, well, but we're looking for a residence, okay? Apartment housing, that's not it. Let's keep going. Congregated living facilities. Oh, here we are. One and two family dwellings and lodging houses with five or fewer guest rooms. OK, um, there we fall. So what do we have to have under water closets? One per dwelling. You know, that's both uh, male and female, just one per dwelling. Lavatories, one per dwelling. Bathtub showers, one per dwelling, per dwelling. 
Uh, drinking fountains, you don't have to have any of those. And then other says you need to have one kitchen sink per dwelling unit and one autom automatic clothes washer connection per dwelling unit. So you would have to have the clothes washer connection in that dwelling in order to be able to, uh, to pass code. So a lavatory, a bathtub or shower, a water closet. Can you substitute the water closet for a urinal? No, you can't because you can only substitute up to 50%. Uh, and it just says you got to have at least one water closet uh, in there. So now if you if you ended up wanting to go and say, well, I'm going to put a toilet, but hey, I'm going to go ahead and throw a urinal in there too. Well, that's great. Uh, you can. You can add in other stuff. But this is the minimum facility requirements, what they're going to make you have to do. And then the clothes washer connection. All right, let's move on a little bit. Uh, hopefully you all kind of got a good feel for that chart. It says, how do you, the, the fixture calculations. To determine the occupant load of each sex, the total occupant load should be divided in half, okay? To determine the required number of fixtures, the fixture ratio or ratios for each fixture type should be applied to the occupant load of each sex in accordance with table 403.1, okay? Fractional numbers resulting from applying the fixture ratios of table 403.1 shall be rounded up to the next whole number. So if you fall in the, into a, and just say, wait a second, it says, uh, uh, you know, one per every hundred. And we come up with the, uh, one per hundred guys. And you came up with that there's going to be a hundred and even if there's only like a hundred and five guys. But they say you all, <coughs> excuse me, you always need to round it up. So you're going to have to go to two. OK, uh, in, in calcul uh, for calculations involving multiple occupancies, such fractional numbers for each occupancy should be first be summed and then rounded up to the next whole number. OK, now um, it goes on to talk to you about and say under the different classifications, if if there's no numbers put to it, OK, you're going to assume that it's always 50 50. OK, to say, OK, we've got a, a restaurant. And in most of your restaurants is going to be, they're going to assume that, hey, you've got couples coming in, families coming in, whatever. And when we're trying to divide up the load with this, we're going to say it's probably going to be about 50 percent guys, 50 percent girls, because uh, it's very general, general use from everybody kind of thing. Uh, so you always if, if there's no nothing specified, just break it up 50 50 um, for however many they have. So if it said we have a restaurant that seats 200, okay, so if it seats 200, then you're going to say, oh, well, we assume 100 guys, 100 females. And then you can do your calculations from, from there. Um, some of them, you know, you might have it, uh, it might not go 50-50, though. So you're going to have to look and just say, hey, in this one, it's, man, boy, this is a, uh, a female clothing store. Uh, yeah, you might get a few guys in there, but it's not going to be like the number of women that are here. So they might just split that up like a, you know, an 80%, 20%, 90%, 10%, you know, however it is. And then you've got to do, you do the math on the total occupancy load and then figure out how many they're going to be. Okay. Let's see. Family or assisted use toilet and, and bath fixtures. Um, You'll see more uh, family bathrooms. It says fixtures located within the family or assisted use toilet and bathing room should uh, required by section 1109.2.1 of the International Build Building Code. Okay, are permitted to be included in the number of required fixtures for either the male or female occupancies in assembly and mercantile occupancies. So there's some places that they, they will require that. Separate facilities. Where do we need separate facilities? Um, where plumbing fixtures are required, separate facilities should be provided for each sex. Uh, we got to have a men's bathroom and a ladies bathroom. But like with most things, there are exceptions. So let's look at some of the exceptions that they name here. Um, separate facilities not required for dwelling units. Uh, if you want to have your own and make it in your in your uh, your house and say, hey, this is the men's bathroom and this is the ladies bathroom. Uh, you could do that, but you don't you don't have to. The, the code does not require separate facilities for a dwelling unit. 
Um, they don't have to be required for structures or tenant spaces with a total occupant load, including both employees and customers of 25 or fewer. You got your the number of customers that are in there in this this small uh, place and uh, including the workers. And it's we expect 25 or less. Then you can just have a, uh, a the same set, you know, a one bathroom for men and women. OK. Separate facilities should not be required in mercantile occupancies, which in the maximum occupant load is a hundred or fewer. And that's in mercantile occupancies, where 100 or fewer. Uh, let's see, they also have except provided in section 405.3.2. Um, if you flipped over there, 405.3.2 says public lavatories. In employee and public toilet rooms, the required lavatory shall be located in the same room as the required water closet, except in uh, K5. Lavatories may be provided in common toilet rooms, uh, vestibule visible from the corridor. And if you go into uh, a lot of those uh, for the little kids, you don't want to send as a as teachers and different ones sending kids to go in and play in the bathroom. And so they say, oh, in those cases, you don't have to put the lavatory sinks in the bathroom. You can have those outside where it's in a visible location so the teacher can send them in. And I can stand right here and be watching the kids wash their hands and say, hey, only one pump of soap. Hey, we don't be slinging water up in the mirror. Hey, quit pumping all that the paper towels out of there. Come on, kids, get out of there. Quit playing in the bathroom and get out. So uh, they make some exceptions there, okay? And then also where the code requires only one toilet facility for each sex, two unisex facilities may be substituted for separate sex uh, facilities. Where you only have to have one toilet for guys and the one toilet for the girls, they say, hey, instead of doing that, you could do two unisex um, bathrooms. Okay. Well, let's see. Then they say a family or assisted use toilet facility serving as separate fixtures. Okay. I'm going to let you, uh, like I said, uh, there is a lot of good information in here. Uh, I'm going to let you read some of this on your own. So you can read that. Um, 403.3, required public toilet facilities. Um, I know that you probably have experienced this before, needing to go to the bathroom. You run into a place and they say, uh, or they even put a little sign on the door, sorry, no public uh, restrooms or something like that. Restrooms only for, for employees only. Uh, now, some might rightly be saying that, but there's a good number of them that, that are not saying that correctly. Um, of course, they, they want to put that up there. Why do I, if I'm the employee, I'm the one that's having to work the register, do all the stuff, and then go in and clean this bathroom and then when I need to go to the bathroom, I go in and I'm having to use the one that everybody's been using. They peed all over the seat and peed all over the floor. They used up all my toilet paper. And I've got to I've got to get right back to the register. And I run in and then that's my toilet conditions. Forget this. I'm typing me up a note and slapping it up there. No, there's no public use toilets. Well, let's see. Are they able to really do that? Okay, 403.3, require public toilet facilities. Customers patrons and visitors you now so you can say a and visitors shall be provided with public toilet facilities in structures and tenant spaces intended for public utilization the number of plumbing fixtures located within the required toilet facility should be uh, provided in accordance with section 403 for all users for all users. Employees shall be provided with toilet facilities in all occupancies. Employee toilet facilities shall be either separate or combined employee and public toilet facilities. So they say you can, hey, if you want to keep that cl a clean toilet for yourself, then go ahead and put it on an employee's bathroom in there, but you got to have the public one also. Now, if you don't want to, don't worry about it. You can just take the, make, make the employees use the public one um, is what they're saying. Uh, let's see, employee toilet facilities should be either separate or combined employee and public toilet facilities. Here's your exceptions. There's always typically exceptions. Public toilet facilities shall not be required in open or enclosed parking garages where there are no parking attendants. Okay. 
And then also structures and tenant spaces intended for quick transactions, including takeout, pickup, and drop-off, having a public access area less than equal or 300 square feet. So if you've got your like little favorite uh, hole in the wall, Chinese joint, it's just you just run in, you call in your order, you go in, you pick it up, and it's for takeout. They don't have to provide you toilet facilities, okay? But if it's in a place where you could be going in, you've got a, you've got a store where you could be doing a, a customer, a patron, and it says, and uh, and visitors. So they it, by them just saying, hey, only toilets are only for paying customers. No, well, how about you? I'm just saying I'm visiting your store because your store is open to the public uh, for public in this buildings for public utilization. Uh, they're supposed to provide them for you as much as they don't want you just running in just, just to go to the bathroom and they would rather you buy something. Uh, they're trying to, uh, you know, frown on that, but they're, they're supposed to have it for you. Okay. So anyway, I guess you could let them know, bring your code book with you next time when they say, uh, Hey, you can't have a bathroom. And they're like, uh, how do you, how do you get by with that? Uh, I hear something. And I he did hear a story that we actually had uh, uh, someone that was up. I think they were up hiring uh, inspections or something, and they were making a trip to the beach. I believe this gentleman's wife, they had to make a stop so she could run. And she she went in and this place that she had to go, she had to really go to the bathroom. And they just said, sorry, we don't have, uh, you know, you can't use our plumbing facility. Uh, uh, facilities here, our, our bathroom facilities. It's only for, and she was like, no, that's not right. And they're like, that's how it is. And she went out and let her husband know in a hurry that he was going to do something about that. And they did. They, they made it known to, uh, and they went through the process of getting that. And then on their way be down to the beach the next time, that's where they stopped so that uh, she went into there and she used their bathroom and said, Hey, I'm, I'm going to make that a planned bathroom stop. So, uh, Anyway, if you want to take that up with them, there you go. Uh, being able to have access to the bathroom. Um, you know, sometimes I've, I've been into some places where they've had boxes and storage stuff stacked up all over, and it was really hard to get into the. But they're anyway, access. Uh, let, I'm going to let you um, read the prohibited toilet room locations and uh, the uh, 403.3.3. Well, let me hit a little bit about that. Location of toilet facilities and occupancies other than malls. They're starting to give you uh, some travel paths, some distances to the bathrooms. So if you're getting the space required to be provided with toilet facilities and the path of travel to such facilities shall not exceed a distance of 500 feet. I mean, you, you shouldn't have to walk over 500 feet uh, to get to the bathroom. Okay. Once again, like I said, there's always a lot of exceptions. The location and maximum distance of travel to required employees facilities in factory and industri industrial occupancies are permitted to exceed that required by this section, provided that the location and maximum distance of, of travel are, are approved. Okay, And then they get into location of employee toilet facilities. Um, I'm going to let you read those next couple ones on your own. Location of toilet facilities in malls. Hey, here, let's just figure this out. Let's see Let's see what Haynes Mall is supposed to have, okay? Location of their toilet facilities. In covered and open mall buildings, the required public and employee toilet facilities shall be located not more than one story above or below the space required to be provided with toilet fa facilities, and the path of travel to such facilities shall not exceed a distance 300 of 300 feet okay so whenever from whatever doorway you're at okay so if you walk in the door you should not be more than 300 feet to a bathroom now maybe you said well i felt like i walked a lot more than 300 feet well maybe you should have turned left instead of turning right okay uh so really you could have a total of 600 feet in between bathrooms but from any point that you're at, in any doorway, any doorway of, uh, so you're going into, uh, let's just say you go into a store. Now, that specific store does not have to have a, its own bathroom facility, even though some of them do. Like you go in and there's, you know, Pennies, I think, has their, some of the big stores have, have got their own toilet facilities. Uh, but the mall also has its own toilet facilities. 
Um, but if you are standing in the doorway of one of those other um, uh, one of those stores, you shouldn't be more than 300 foot away from a bathroom. OK. Pay facilities. Uh, some places you travel to, you know, they got the pay toilets. So or you got, if you want to go to the bathroom, you're paying for them. Now, what does it say about it here? Where pay facilities are installed, okay, such facilities shall be in excess of the required minimum facilities. Uh, it always your required minimum facilities need to be free of charge. So they can't charge you to use the bathroom for their minimum facilities. But now they might look at it and just say, hey, we're going to put it in the minimum facilities requirements. But then, uh, you know, those don't go, those aren't going to get clean near as often. And they're going to be crowded and, and, and everything else because it's just we expect to be a busy place here. We're going to put in some extra toilets. And these are the ones we keep clean uh, and smelling fresh and, uh, you know, everything else. These uh, have got to be in excess of the minimum, but then they might, might charge for the use on those. Okay. Door locking. Where a toilet room is provided for the use of multiple occupants, the egress door for the room shall not be lockable from the inside of the room. Okay, so if you if it's designed for multiple occupants, okay, you shouldn't be able to be able to lock it from the inside. But if you've got a number to where it just says, hey, we only have to have for the number of people that are in here is designed for only have to have that one occupant, they should be able to go in and lock the door. So now you got a toilet and you don't need stalls or anything like that. Um and just to say everything's right in there. And if they go in, they should could be able to lock the door. Okay, you got he talks about signage for them, uh, directional signage, drinking fountain locations. Um, let's see. Uh, here's one I think I do ask this on the quiz as far as uh, drinking fountains. Drinking fountains shall not be required to be located in individual tenant spaces, provided the public drinking fountains are located. Uh, distance of travel of 500 feet. The most remote location tent spaces. Keep going down the last sentence. Drinking fountains. Oh, let's see. Uh, should be located in an accessible route. Well, we'll keep going. That's not exactly what I was thinking of. I think it's a little bit something a little different um, than I might ask in that quiz. We'll see if we get to that a little bit later. I'm going to let you read... Plumbing fixtures for public schools. I'll let you read all that. Miscellaneous provisions. One I do ask about, I talk about um, as far as modular classroom buildings. We may come back to this when I go over the quiz with you. So look at 403.8.5.4 and 403.8.5.5. We'll come back and look at those. Distance travel to modular from the bathroom to a modular classroom. Okay. Uh, then we get into section 405, installation of the fixtures. Uh, now, here's some good information uh, in some of the stuff that we've already talked about. When we went to the, uh, uh, when we go to the house and we drill that up, uh, we say, and where are we going to drill that hole for the toilet? Where are we going to put that? Now, here's some of the requirements, it says. Okay, so it was saying water closets, urinals, lavatories, and bidets. Okay. A water closet, urinal, lavatory, bidet should not be set closer than 15 inches from its center line to any side wall. Okay? And we talked about that. Remember when we drilled that hole, we said we can't, we can't have that toilet, the center of that, any closer uh, to the finish wall. And we remember saying, oh, there's going to be some half-inch drywall on this side when we're done. So we got to at least go over to 15 and a half. Because right now, there's no drywall there. So these are all finished wall re requirements. Uh, let's see. It can't be closer than 30 inches center to center between adjacent fixtures. Cannot be less than 21 inches clearance in front of the water closet, the urinal, lavatory, bidet, to any wall, fixture, or door. Remember with that front edge clearance, we got to have at least 21 inches of clearance in front. Uh, let's see. Water closet compartments can't be uh, less than 30 inches wide and 60 inches deep. OK, uh, let's see. In with no, let's see. In depth. To, uh, and that's for floor mounted water closets uh, and not less than 30 inches width and 56 inches deep for wall hung uh, water closets. OK. 
when you put a wall hung, you got that the base isn't sitting on the floor. It allows a little bit more turn room if you're if you're in there. Okay. Let's see public lavatories. Let's skip down a little bit. Um, Got to make sure that water closet compartments when you need those. Urinal partitions. It's just saying uh, it's giving you some some rules about those partitions. And I've we've we uh, put some plumbing in a building where the builder was like, hey, I'm going to throw the partitions. Don't worry about those. Just hang them. Uh, we hung them and they came in and put some partitions. But uh, not thinking that there was actually a specific code to that as far as distance out and, and, and heights and everything on these uh, urinal partitions. Some of that had to get backed up and redone. It talks about floor flanges, uh, securing these and securing wall hung water closet bowls. Um, Slip joint connections. Slip joint connections are those ones that you, we, we thread them together. And we go, when we go to trim out a house and set in the fixtures, those the tubular traps got threaded connections. That's called slip joint connections. And they may be moved in the, uh, uh, to install, made and installed uh, in the trap outlet, trap inlet, and the traps in part of the trap seal. But uh, if you have those, you need to be able to provide access to those in a utility space not less than 12 inches in its smallest dimension or on another proved arrangement to be able to get access to that. Uh, where the such access cannot be provided, you got to have access doors, um, uh, shall not be required, provided that all joints are soldered, solvent submitted, or screwed to form a solid connection. So in the places where we can't put them, we're going to glue together our traps, uh, and that'll be fine. We're putting one in the wall, um, uh, for the laundry connections, but we glue that together so there's no access needed to it. Okay. Now they start to go down and break down the various fixtures. And when they have these fixtures, it's just going to give you some specific information to each fixture. Um, I'm not going to go through every fixture, but I'm going to talk about just a few. The automatic clothes washers. Uh, the part that I want to pick out here, it gives you the trap size form as being a two inch trap on that. Um, and it says the vertical part can be, but what I want to bring out is this is the place that, that says you're, it's requiring a three inch horizontal drain to the base of the clothes washer. Let me just draw a quick little picture of what this is talking about. So let's just say it looks like, uh, this right here. There's through the, there's your floor. Must be an old home. It looks very uneven. But this this drain going under the floor horizontal to the base of it, that's got to at least be a three inch pipe. Then, but when you turn vertical, you could turn and that vertical can go up two inches. Minimum trap size on that is two inches as well for this clothes washer location. And that's what it's talking about right there. Okay. It gets into bathtubs, saying the minimum trap sizes for that. It talks about uh, the temperature uh, limiting device as far as what it, the temperature is allowed into there. The days, dishwashing machines, uh, drinking fountains. Here's where I was thinking about, under specifically under the drinking fountains, prohibited location. Drinking fountains, water coolers, and water dispensers shall not be installed in public restrooms. Can't put the drinking fountain in a public restroom. I believe I asked that on the quiz, but we'll, we'll cover it here in a little bit. Um, it, now, here's one as far as needing the drinking fountain, okay? Let's see. Uh, 4104, substitution, where, where restaurants, nightclub, taverns, or bars provided... Provide drinking water in a container free of charge. Drinking fountains should not be required in those establishments. Um, so it says you've got to have it free of charge. Okay. If you've got a restaurant that does not have a water cooler or water fountain to where you can go get you a cup of water for free. 
um, then they should not be able to charge you for the water. Okay, they can't charge you. Now, there's a lot of places that are. And then they said they kind of tried to get around it by saying, oh, no, we're not charging you for the water. We're charging you 25 or 50 cents or whatever it was for the cup. So they changed again and says, uh, provide drinking water in, in a container free of charge. So if if those places are established that are, are fall under and they were built under this code, they have to give you a cup of water uh, if you request one because they don't have a water cooler around or um, a water drinking fountain. They are supposed to give you a water for free. So now you can try to push that as much as you want to when they say, oh, that's uh, 75 cents for your water. You're like, wait a second. Why are you charging me 75 cents for the water? It's uh, supposed to be free here. So that's going to have to go up a little bit higher. Maybe you could talk to our uh, uh, our inspections. Only they they are going to where they follow the code is on installing. Make sure it's met upon while it's being built. That sort of thing. They are not co they're not enforcers of it. Enforcers of this code afterwards. Uh, so you but you might be able to get the uh, the state board uh, some other code officials in on that. Uh, depending on how, how much you want to push for your free water. All right. Floor and trench drains, food waste disposers, talks about all those, garbage cans and washers, laundry trays, lavatories, uh, showers, um, good information in, in, in these areas, floor and wall area, uh, short, uh, shower floors and receptors. And it talks about PVC sheets. Uh, chlorinated polyethylene sheets, sheet lead, sheet copper, and all of this is, is it's re referring to these shower um, liners. Okay, then sinks, urinals, water closets, whirlpool bathtubs, all of those. So this is where it gets into is where it's talking about it, all the fixtures in Chapter 4. Fixtures. It's going to talk about those fixtures. And then in uh, it also faucets and fixture fittings. So in section 424, faucets and other fixture fittings, um, it talks about those. Hand showers, 424.2, hand sh uh, held showers shall conform to that uh, ASME. Hand held showers should provide backflow protection. Okay. Uh, this is one that might get overlooked sometimes. You, you go remove your shower head and you put a handheld in there. Uh, that doesn't have a means of backflow pr uh, protection. Um, if you're doing it new, the inspector's going to want to see, is there built in uh, something built in for the backflow uh, protection on that? Or do we need to see a device up there with some type of vacuum uh, breaker? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Anti-siphon device. Uh, we, I do ask a question about the multiple gang showers and uh, individual shower valves. We'll, we'll, We'll look at that uh, as we start to go over the quiz. Uh, let's see. Um, what else do I want to cover? I'm going to be. I'm going to stop reading right there. We're going to go and go over the, uh, the go over the quiz together. Uh, but that's leaving you a little bit. A uh, little bit of extra reading just to go through on your own, your own. Fill in the fill in the gaps there that we didn't cover in here to do that reading. Um, but let's. I wanted to make sure. Want to make sure that we got the time to cover uh, your quiz. I, I, I like it to where if you watch these videos, that you're going to feel really well prepared for uh, just going over and jumping over on that blackboard and uh, completing these quizzes. So. Your chapter four quiz, uh, it's going to be a true-false quiz. And here's question number one. The minimum size stall for a floor-mounted water closet is 30 inches wide by 56 inches deep. 30 inches wide by 56 inches deep. Is that a true or false? And we, we looked at water stalls. Uh, closet stalls. So we got to flip back to that. All right, to say where was that information? 
water closet compartments. Here we go, installs. Water closets and not less than, it says not, thir not less than 30 inches width and 56 inches in depth for wall hung water, water closets. So what would be the absolute, the minimum size stall for, oh, for a floor mounted water closet? Ooh, that was about tricky. I about, about tricked myself with that one. It says a minimum sized stall for a floor mounted water closet was 30 wide by 56 deep. If you remember the floor mounted needed to be 30 inches wide by 60 deep. If it's a wall hung, it could be 30 inches wide by 56 inches deep. So don't let that one trip you up. That's on page 29, 405.3.1. Read that down there. And so that would actually be uh, for a floor mounted 30 by 56. No, that's not a, that's not a true statement. That's for, for wall hung. Okay, number two. The minimum number of water closets required for a dormitory is one per 10 for both guys and girls. So we're looking at what's the minimum number of water closets in a dormitory for guys and girls. So you got to go back over to that chart. Remember, we we're doing this chart. We got to find dormitory on here. OK, so let's see. Where are we looking for dormitories? say oh what is that uh is that institutional is it residential oh residential r2 dormitories fraternities sororities and that so it goes over with that one it says water closets follow the chart down male and female one per ten one per ten for both the guys and the girls and is that what we said minimum number of water closets required for a dormitory is one per ten both guys and girls, that's a true statement. True. Question three, an automatic clothes washer connection is required in one and two family dwellings. Do you have to have an automatic clothes washer in a one and two family dwelling or in your residence? Do you have to have it? And we covered that in the lesson. We said, yes, we do. So that is, it says it's required in there. So that's a true statement. Question number four, drinking fountains are allowed to be installed in toilet rooms. That was the question I about was, about was looking for it in another location. But underneath the drinking fountains, it said in there under that uh, specific one part, we was talking about drinking fountains. It says that they were not allowed. They're prohibited. Prohibited means not allowed. Uh, so drinking fountains are allowed to be installed in toilet rooms. Don't misread that. It's so easy to want to read and miss it. We just uh, it left out the word not allowed. It said drinking fountains are allowed to be installed in toilet rooms. So, uh, but no, they're not. They are not. That's a, so it's a false statement. Question five. I did not cover this one. It says every 20 inches of rim space in a group wash sink should be considered as one lavatory. So we're talking about lavatories. Let's go over to lavatories. Where it's talking about lavatories. This was some of that information that you were going to read on your own. Let's see what it says under lavatories. Lavatories. Page 32, section 416 says lavatories. And if you're reading that first one, 416.1, it says group wash-up equipment shall conform to the requirements as of section 402, and every 20 inches of rim space shall be considered as one lavatory. Every 20 inches of rim space are, is considered as one lavatory. So if you got one of those big group, I don't know if some, there might have been some of you that haven't seen these, but a lot of times they might have them, um, they might have uh, them kind of rectangular. A lot of them you might see that are circular and a, a big round and they got multiple outlets and you might step on the floor bar, uh, a bar on the floor and it sprays out. 
every 20 inches of rim space is considered to be equivalent to one lavatory. So if you had um, 60 inches of rim space on there, you could say that one group wash station is, is, is sufficient to be counted as three lavatories. Okay. So question five was every 20 inches of rim space in a group wash up sink shall be considered as one lavatory. That's a true statement. Question six, the maximum distance from the entrance of a permanent modular classroom without facilities to the toilet room of an adjacent building is 200 feet. So this is talking about a permanent modular classroom that doesn't have facilities. Let's look at that. Well, uh, that was back. I said we were going to come back to that. Right after the chart, with minimum facility requirements, there were some written uh, written places on page 29. So since it's, what did the question say? It said a permanent modular classroom. So there's one for modular classrooms and there's one for temporary modular. So this is a permanent. It says toilet rooms may be omitted, omitted meaning not, not in there, left out, in a modular classroom building when the facilities of sufficient capacity for the additional occupants are provided in an adjacent building and located within 200 feet. So, is the maximum distance from the entrance of the permanent modular classroom without facilities to the toilet room of an adjacent building is 200 feet? Yes, that is. Now, the main thing, also remember, the building that's got the facilities in it has to have the enough facilities to say that that who, however many people are in the modular classroom, it's got to include those in the number of the occupancy load. Um, and many places will have, they've got more than what's the minimum. But that was question six. Four more to go. Number seven, a water closet can be no closer than 30 inches from its center line to a side wall. From the center of the water closet to its side wall, no closer than 30 inches. And that might have sounded good to some of you, but remember, no, it was a 30-inch gap that you need. From center to side was 15. Excuse me. Um, so that would have been a false statement. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, I'm back from my sneeze break. Uh, so let's now jump into question number eight. The minimum size drain outlet for a floor drain in a public coin operated laundry is three inches. Is that true or false? So let's look at uh, floor drains in public coin, coin operated laundries. Let's get back to the where, where were the name and all those fixtures. Um. Ooh, section 412 talks about floor and trench drains. And we're looking about how was the floor drain. And it says for a public coin operated laundry, if you look on down, uh, the size of floor drains in 412.3 says the um, can't be less than two inches in size. But let's don't stop right there. We're talking about public laundries. 412.4 says in those you got to have them. They can't be smaller than three inches. So minimum size drain outlet for a floor drain in a public coin operated laundry is three inches. That's a true statement. Number nine, shower receptacle waste outlets are not required to have removable strainers. Your shower drain, does that have to be, have that strainer on the top? Does that have to be removable? And this, this statement says, they're not required to have removable. Find out if that's true or false. So let's go to talk about, oh, showers. Let's go find showers. Okay. Showers is found on page 32, section 417. And let's look at it. Water supply risers. That's not what we're talking about. Shower waste outlets. Ah, oh, waste outlets. That said something about receptacle waste outlets. There's where what we're talking about. 417.3. 
it goes and talks about the little size holes that can't be bigger than a certain size and talks about all that. Um, and then it says the waste outlet should be fastened to the waste pipe in a proved manner. All that's information on there. But it also, it says for other than waste outlets and tubs, it says shall have removable strainers. Okay, so they have to be removable. Uh, this one says they don't have to be able to remove them, are not required to be removable strainers. So that's a false statement. And our last one, number 10, 21 inches of clearance is needed in front of a urinal. Is that true or false? 21 inches of clearance was needed in front of a urinal. Well, it's not just a urinal. It's water closet, lavatories, and other places. But where did we find that information? If you flip back a couple pages to the installation of the fixtures on page 29, it says under 405.3.1, in front of those fixtures shall not be not less than 21 inches in clearance in front of a water closet, a urinal, lavatory, or bidet to any wall, fixture, or door. Got to have at least 21 inches of clearance. So let's look at that question. 21 inches of clearance is needed in front of a urinal. That's a true statement. And that's going to finish it up for uh, our highlight of Chapter 4, fixtures, faucets, and fixture fittings for this time. So once you've got that all jotted down and, and, you're, and you're ready for it, uh, go ahead and click over there and take the, uh, the that chapter four quiz and um, go ahead and get it knocked out so you'll be done with it. Don't, don't have that hanging over you for the week. But uh, I'll look forward to seeing you next time. If you have any questions on it, feel free to always reach out to me. And I know some of you were saying that there would be a little bit long video. So I think I shaved about ooh, four minutes off of this video compared to the last one. So just, you know, I'll give you a little time to, to live a little bit, a little extra four minutes there. All right. Well, you all have a great day. I look forward to uh, seeing you next time. Thank you. Thank you.